All right, Shalom. First and foremost, all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Kakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the Elders Great Millstone, and South Asian brothers doing this thing in sincerity and truth and with charity. And um, I'm hop right into it, you know. You got these different scoffers promoting out there smoking weed and shit. Which, that's on you. Just like it, you got Jake. They're supposed to be in the truth, still wear hats when they teach. Because the law don't say thou shalt not smoke or thou shalt not wear a hat. But I'm hit a few precepts that's touching on why the tradition of Great Millstone is we do not smoke. All right? And I'm going to leave it like that through the spirit. We, Great Millstone tradition, we do not smoke. So first, let's Titus 3 and 9. But avoid foolish questions, genealogies, and contentions, and strivings about the law. For they are unprofitable and vain. So if you don't agree with us, we're not going to go back and forth with you. You want to smoke in your camp? You want to wear your hat when you teach and all that? That's on you. You want to have long hair, dreads, linings? That's on you, bro, right? A man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, but condemned him, but condemned of himself. So we're going to leave it at that. It's, Hey, who, who am I to judge another man's servants or the Lord if you if you stand to fall? So we're going to hit these precepts and move past it, man. Move past it. So firstly, I, I, I'm going to stay on the vein of thou should not smoke, thou should not wear, your, uh, wear a hat when you, when you teach. Because that's the thing. Oh, Paul, Paul just said it. Paul just said it. But then Paul also said, 1 Corinthians... 14 and 37 if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual let him acknowledge that, that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord but if any man be ignorant let him be ignorant so the things that the, that we say through the spirit you know they say it through the spirit all right, God knows. So um, let me hit on the the the, the hat thing first. You know, your head covered. I think it's right. Is it this chapter or the next one? Yeah, Exodus 28, 40. And for Aaron's sons, thou shalt make coats, and thou shalt make for them girdles, and bonnets shalt thou make for them for glory and beauty. And thou shalt put so they had um, head wraps with an opening in the middle. Here's the, and here's how you know it's an opening. And thou shalt put them upon Aaron thy brother and his sons with him, and shall anoint them, and, and consecrate them, and sanctify them, that they, be minister, that they may minister unto me, and the priest's office. So they were able to still get anointed while they had this bonnet on their head. Meaning it did not cover their crown. They had an opening up top. Alright. Um, Exodus 29. Let me double check. Yep. Exodus 29 and 4. Aaron and his sons thou shalt bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And shall wash them with water. And thou shalt take the garments and put upon Aaron the coat and the robe of the ephod. And the ephod and the breastplate. And gird him with the curious girdle of the ephod. And thou shalt put the mitre upon his head. And put the holy crown upon the mitre. Then shalt thou take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him. And thou shalt bring his sons and put coats upon them, and thou shalt gird them with girdles. Aaron and his sons, and put the bonnets on them, and the priest shall, and the priest's office shall be theirs for perpetual statute. And thou shalt consecrate Aaron and his sons. All right, there you go, man. So clearly they had an opening. So when Paul said that a man should not pray or prophesy, he said it with the spiritual understanding of the law. That a man should not pray or prophesy with his head covered. That's not our custom. 
Does it make you wicked for wearing a hat? No. But he touched on that because the Greeks, it, it became a thing when we was in the Greek captivity, that Jake's was covering their heads, wearing hats, which, which wasn't our custom. So he was putting the, the balance to it. Look, you ain't going off of wearing a hat. It ain't our custom, but you ain't going off. All right? But when you pray or prophesy, don't have your head covered. Plain and simple. Plain and simple, man. Now, I believe it's the same type of spirit for the women because when she came, spirit of jealousy. Um, let's see. Yep, numbers five. Now, here's a time, you know, if a man thought his woman was cheating, committing adultery, all right, he had no proof. She would go before the priest, all right? And when she came before the priest, what does it say? Numbers 5. And um, 16. And the priest shall bring her near and set her before the Lord. And the priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel. And of the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle, the priest shall take and put it unto the water. And the priest shall set the woman before the Lord and uncover the woman's head. So she came before the priest. When this spiritual act is happening, her head is covered. But he, he had to uncover it to put this stuff on her head. So naturally, we have the understanding because Paul precepts that when a woman was praying or prophesying, she should have her head covered. All right. And put the offering of the of Amora in her hands, which is the jealousy offering, and the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causes the curse. All right, because that's the woman's glory; she covered up to keep it hidden. That's for her man. And they show you that even in the movies, when that, when when the, in the older movies at least, when a woman took her hair down when it was time to get sexy, she just shaking and show it, it'll change everything. That's why uh uh. It's just it's just spiritual, man. You can you can see it. You know, I'll leave it at that. All right, and not like these damn Muslim motherfuckers. <laughs> they cut oh they cover their face up. They cover everything up. That's actually the harlot's attire. They had they hid their face because they was a whore. All right, we ain't over righteous, man. Cover the hair up. That's your man's glory. He should get that slow mo hair takedown, shake it back and forth to let it to let it go into his style. Everybody shouldn't be seeing your hair. That's for your man. It's if, if, you know, if you're married. And either way, when you're married or not married, you should cover your head when you pray or prophesy. It's that simple. Now, the law don't say thou should cover your head, woman, have your head uncovered, man. No, but in the spirit, we know that to be true. Paul knows to be true. He said it. Now, let's hit, hit the topic at hand. Genesis 1. And, uh, yeah, 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree, and the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. So we know what we can do with it. All right. Herbs can be eaten. It says right here is meat. That can be made into a drink. And the same thing to consume. Okay. Now we, we do know. Um, some herbs have smell, smell properties and etc. Scriptures talk about it. Incense. So that's a part of wisdom. Knowing that you can make incense. All right, that happens. But we know right here, it tells us what we can use it for. We have the examples of the scripture, so we can eat it. You can make incense with it. You can drink it. All right, even if it's for fucking recreational use, whatever. Says you can eat it, so who gives a shit? But we have nothing that alludes to smoking to it. And, um,. Don't get the Syrah. But we have the scripture that told us what we can use it for. So we keep that tradition, man. We can do it. 
All right, that's our, that's our tradition. I'll put it like that. And let and uh, touching on the medicinal part, there is no medicinal purpose or use to smoking weed. Zero. All right. The studies for marijuana use is for tinctures and taking it internally. What happens when you smoke weed? You kill off. Once you light it, all the 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 fire the the, the cannabinoids instantly are depleted. Once you hit two, even if you making a tincture or whatever or infusing it, once that shit hits about a lot of cannabinoids, CBDs, the main medicinal part of of the the plant, it leaves at above. They start to leave at about 250 degrees. And whatever's left over at 300, they definitely gone. So that direct fire to that, all the cannabinoids are gone. And a huge portion of the THC is gone, actually. There's no medicinal purposes to smoking weed. And also, the um, smoking weed leaves you with a chemical imbalance in the brain. That's why you have paranoia. Because your, your brain has THC receptors and cannabinoid receptors. So you smoking it, you getting all THC, no cannabinoids. And Esau's done the search on him. He's wiser than Daniel, man. All right? So that's just my take on it. The scriptures say what they say. We know what we can do with it. And sometimes it's best to just, hey, it's better safe than sorry. But we know we can do it. It's like we got the example of the of the men not having their heads covered, and it turns out, well, that's because you ain't supposed to have your head covered. That's why they had the hole there. That's called the spirit of the law. So we know it's meat for. This is Rock 39, 21. A man need not to say what is this, wherefore is that. But he hath made all things for their uses. There you go, man. And through the scripture, we got examples of these uses. We have examples of Wood being used to heal the water, making the bitter water, poisoned water, sweet again, making it drinkable. So you go to the science now, and they tell you you can take the acorns and filter your water. Well, we got examples like that in the scriptures, because the scriptures is where wisdom is, is, is found. We got examples of, of a, 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 what they call aromatherapy. We have these examples of the incense being lit and, and this happened or that happened. We have these examples. Even spiritual things with the, the, the liver being lit. And it's chased the evil spirit away. And then you have those on the left hand side, which today they know they use the same type of shit and like they incense to witchcraft and all that. And I say that to say this. There's a left hand side to everything, man. So we wanna we wanna make sure we we doing what's on the right hand side, not to fall into that left hand side. And the Lord established everything when He comes, man. Um, what verses? What verse? Oh yeah, this Sirach. That was the same chapter. Sirach thirty nine. In verse um it's, man, it's the same chapter, damn. Twenty-four. As his ways are plain unto the holy, so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. For the for the good are good things created from the beginning, so evil things for sinners. The principal things for the whole use of man's life are water, fire, iron, and salt, flour of wheat, honey, milk, and the blood of the grape, and oil, and clothing. All these things are for good to the godly, so to the sinners they are turned into evil. All right, let's give an example of that, man. Esau has, you ever, you didn't, look, this is the craziest shit. Clothes being used for evil. All right? Look up the effects 
that um polyester has on your testosterone or just your body period man it's fucked up this man is truly the devil man so there's a left hand side to everything so hey, that's that's my two cents on it man with that all praise on the glory too Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shabba, Shamra Kakodash, double honest to the Apostle Earl's Great Millstone, and Southern Brothers doing this thing in sincerity and truth, then with charity, Shalom, Baba Ball.